Healthy relationships take time and a little bit of work, and databases are no different. I'm going to show you three different types of relationships, when you want to use each of them, and how to implement them in Postgres. So let's get into number one, which is a one-to-one -one relationship. So this is where you have one table that has a relationship to another table, but each row in the first table can only reference a single row in the other and vice versa. So this might be useful when you have a really wide table with a bunch of columns. So let's say we have a user, but then their address is broken up across multiple columns. So one for street number, street name, state, etc. That's a whole lot of columns that might be null if we don't yet have an address for this user. And it may just be irrelevant to the majority of our queries if they don't actually care about the address. So we could separate each of those columns related to the user's address into their own table just for addresses. And then we could set up a one-to-one -one relationship between the rows in the users table and the rows in the addresses table. Now, if we just want the users, we can query just for the users. And if we specifically want their addresses, then we can join on that table. So how do we actually set up this kind of schema in Postgres? Well, firstly, we need to create a new table for our users. And we'll start with these two columns. So we have an ID, which is a big int, which is automatically generated and is being used as our primary key. We then have a name for our user, which is just going to be a text field and should probably be not null because we probably want each of our users to have a name. And then this is where we would have each of those columns for our address. So we can say like, address street number and then address street name and blah, 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 blah. But since we want to break these out into their own table, we can declare that above. So we want to create a table for our addresses, which is going to have these columns. So we have an ID, a street number, street name and state. Now we can set up that relationship from our users table and say this user references a specific address ID. So that is going to be a big int like the ID from the addresses table. And we can say this references the addresses tables ID column. And for this one, we need to enforce uniqueness as we only want one row from the users table to reference one of those addresses, which we can do with the unique keyword. So this ensures that for the entire users table, only one row references a specific address. If more than one user could reference an address, then this would be a one to many relationship which we'll look at next. Now this would work to set up a one-to-one -one relationship between the users and addresses tables. But since we've already got this ID column in our users table and this ID column in our addresses table, and we know that primary keys enforce uniqueness, we could just make it that our users ID references our addresses tables ID column, which means we would no longer need this extra column. But now when we go to create a new user, it's going to check that that ID exists in the addresses table, which as we said before, we're not always going to have an address for every one of our users. So instead of the ID from our users table referencing the address table, we want to move this up. So our addresses ID references our users ID. And then since our create table statement now references a table that doesn't yet exist, we need to move this one underneath the statement to create our users table. We can also clean this one up and also add a semicolon after this statement. So we can now create a bunch of users in our users table table without them needing to have an address. And then once they want to add an address, we can insert a new row into the addresses table whose ID references the ID from the users table. This means we don't actually need to generate a new ID when we're creating an address because it will be set to the ID of that specific user. We still want this to be our primary key and we want it to reference the users table. So now we can run these two statements to create our tables. And now we have a one to one relationship between our users and our addresses. So let's insert some data. So let's insert into the users table and we only need to specify a name with the values John, Yuri, Tyler and Thor. So let's run that to insert our users and then we want to insert into our addresses table and the columns we're going to provide are the ID because remember that was generated by the users table. We also need a street number, a street name and a state. I think that was all the columns. Street number, street name, state. Excellent. And the values for those ones are just going to be for user one. So that's me. And I'm living at 123 on my favorite street, which is fake street in the state of Springfield. And yes, that is a Simpsons reference, but probably quite an obscure one. So we are just going to insert one address for me at 123 fake street. And now if we just want to select all of the columns from the users table, then we can do that to get 
just our users. And if we specifically want their addresses, then we can join on the addresses table on the addresses ID column matching our users ID column. Now, if we give this one a run, it gives us back only the users that have an address. And this is because join by default does an inner join, which excludes all of those null values. And so what we actually want is a left join. Now, if we give this one another run, we can see a row for each of our users. And then those address fields are only populated if they exist in the addresses table. Another good use case for a one-to-one -one relationship is where you wanna have different permissions for different columns in the same table. You can break those extra secret columns out into their own table and then use something like row level security to enforce those more strict access policies on that secret data. But overall, one-to-one -one relationships are probably the least common type of relationship that you'll find in a database. And this is because even if tables start out with that one-to-one -one relationship, over time there's often a reason to introduce multiple rows in one table that reference a single row in the other. With our addresses example, this could be multiple users who live at the same address. There's no need to duplicate all of that data for every user in that household. So let's talk about one-to-many relationships. This covers that exact use case where you have one row in one table that's referenced by multiple rows in another. This is by far the most common type of relationship in databases and is often what justifies reaching for a relational database over something like a document store. So let's create a new query for our one-to-many example. And this is gonna be based off a schema with posts and comments. So posts are like blog posts. They each have an ID, a title, and whether or not they're published. And then we have a collection of comments, which also have an ID, the content of the comment, and then the post that they belong to. So each post can have multiple comments, but each comment can only belong to a single post. Because unless you're doing a whole bunch of spamming, it doesn't really make sense for a single comment to be left on multiple blogs but you should totally check out my new cryptocurrency as a link in the description and a series of comments left on every previous Superbase video. But back to our example, you may notice that this is pretty similar to the first version of our one-to-one -one relationship before we started sharing that ID. So we have an extra column for post ID, which is referencing that ID of the post table. But in the one-to-one -one example, we had that unique keyword, meaning only one of the comments can reference a particular post, meaning each blog post could only ever have one comment sounds kind of nice actually, maybe we should implement that. But by removing that uniqueness constraint, we're saying we can have multiple comments that reference the same blog post. So let's run these ones to create both of our tables and then we can insert three blog posts and fix up our capitalization there and then insert four comments. So the first three belong to our first post and then this last one was left on our third post but we don't yet have any comments for our second post. So let's run these ones to insert our data and now if we want to select each of our blog posts we can select all of the columns from the post table and then left join in our comments on our comments dot post underscore ID matching our posts ID. And if we select this one and give it a run, we'll see we get back a row for each instance of a blog post and its comment, which is probably not what we want. We probably don't want first post, first post, first post, third post, second post. Can we collapse these down? So we just have a row for each of our posts and then a column that contains all of the comments for that specific post. Well, if we restructure this select slightly to say we want to only select all of the columns from the post table and then we can use the JSON underscore aggregate or AGG function to collapse all of the comments for a particular post down into one column, which we can alias to comments. And then we just need to tell Postgres that we want to group all of these rows by the posts.id column. So we only get one row per post. So now if we run this one, we can see a much nicer result set with a row for each of our posts and then a big JSON blob containing all of the columns from each row in the comments table that references this specific post. And that's why you don't actually need an ORM, just learn the five SQL statements you actually need to write and then practice them over and over again. Speaking of which, I've put together a collection of drills to do exactly that. But we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Next up, we have many-to-many -many relationships, which are similar to one-to-many relationships, but multiple rows from one table can reference multiple rows from another. 
This means we need to introduce an additional joining table that sits in the middle where each row is an instance of joining one row from the first table to another row in the second table. This is another super common relationship often found when you're associating a user with an instance of something. So like a user enrolling in a course or maybe subscribing to your SaaS product. So you create an instance of that specific user for that specific subscription tier, which we can implement by creating a customers table and a subscriptions table. You may notice that neither of these actually reference each other because the joining table will be responsible for setting up that relationship. We can also insert some customers. So again, we we have John, Yuri, Tyler, and Thor, AKA our super amazing DevRel team at Superbase. And while we're talking about subscriptions, you should totally hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can hear when one of these absolute superstars drops a new video. But back to our example, we can also insert some subscriptions. So we have a hobby tier at $25 a month and a pro tier at $50 a month. So we can run everything we've got here to create our customers and our subscriptions. Now we just need to create that joining table to subscribe a particular customer to a particular subscription tier. So a common convention when you're creating a table for a many to many relationship is to use the name of the first table. So in our case, customers underscore the name of the second table. So in this case, subscriptions. And then the columns for this one are just going to be our customer ID, which references our customer tables ID and a subscription ID, which references our subscriptions ID. And and then we can define these two columns as a composite primary key. So we can say this is made up of a customer underscore ID and also a subscription underscore ID, meaning the ID for each of the rows in this table is actually a combination of two columns. So both a customer ID and the ID of one of our subscription tiers. Those together uniquely identify one row in this joining table. We can also add additional columns that we might want to keep a track of for this specific subscription for this specific customer. So we might want a created at date so we know exactly when this user subscribed. And let's run this one to create our joining table and set up that relationship between our customers and subscriptions. And then we can subscribe one of our users by inserting a new row into the customer's subscriptions table, providing a customer ID and a subscription subscription ID, so in this case, subscribing John to the hobby tier and Yuri to the pro tier. So let's run this one to subscribe our customers. And then if we want to select all of the columns from the customers table, but we also wanna know their level of subscription, we can select an additional column, which is actually a sub query where we select the subscription ID from our customers subscriptions joining table where the customer ID equals this customer's ID. Now, if we run this one, we see a list of each of our customers and we see their subscription ID or null if they're not subscribed. But what if we want the name of their subscription tier rather than just the ID? Well, let's add another subquery. So here we're selecting the subscription ID column, but we could replace this with another subquery that digs deeper into that row and selects the name from the subscriptions table where that subscriptions ID matches our current customer's subscriptions subscription ID. And let's also give this an alias to say we want this column to be our subscription. Now, if we run this ridiculous, overly complex statement, we get the ID for each of our users, their name, and then the subscription that they're currently on or null if they're unsubscribed. And you are now a relationship pro and understand when and how to use one-to-one, -one, one-to-many, and many-to-many -many relationships. If you want to take your Postgres knowledge to the next level, then I recommend you check out these drills. We go through a series of exercises based on the schema from this video and get in those database reps. If you're ready for the next topic, then check out this playlist. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.